Welcome back, Bamberger Forestry Farm. My name's Rowan Reed. Uh, we planted these trees. It was a long time ago now, um, back in 1987. So some of our trees, our oldest ones, are now 37 and a half years old. Uh, it's early 2025, so I think that's right. Uh, this is probably one of our biggest eucalypts. Uh, we've been pruning them, spacing them, growing high quality timber. And as you've probably seen the others, we harvest, and we've just built a house out of our own timber. And now we know a lot about the timber quality and we're confident that pruning and spacing trees, getting large diameter quickly, uh, is actually really good for wood quality in eucalypts. And uh, we've got some pretty special trees now. This one here, I'll measure the diameter. Usually we measure diameter with a, a a diameter tape, but our tapes only measure up to 60 centimetre diameter trees. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to push the tape in. We're measuring from 1.3 metres up above the ground level, and we pull the tape around, a normal metric ruler. Try to keep it pretty flat. How am I going? Coming back around, and we measure it back here, and it's 3 metres. 10 centimetres, another 4 centimetres. So it's 314 centimetres in circumference. Now, if you remember your old school mathematics, we're interested in the diameter. So the circumference can be converted to diameter by dividing by pi. Now, pi in the old method is uh, 22 divided by 7. So 22 divided by 7 equals 3.1428. So let's divide our 314 centimetre tree, divide it by 3.14, and not surprisingly, it's one metre in diameter, 100 centimetres across there. This is our first 100 centimetre eucalypt in 37 and a half years. So roughly three centimetres diameter growth. Our rainfall is nothing special, particularly this year, but we went through the millennium drought. Our rainfall was below 500 mils. Occasionally it might get up to 1,000, but on average we're about 650, 700 millimetres of rainfall. This is actually a good soil, but a tree can't grow well even in a good climate with a good soil if it doesn't have space to grow. And the difference here is we actually thinned around these trees when they were young and gave them plenty of space to spread their canopy, big canopy, lots of leaves, lots of photosynthesis, sugars flow down the stem, put on diameter growth. And if you prune, that diameter growth is clear wood. And the only risks that there are is insects, disease, fire, storms, and fortunately this tree survived all those, and we'd expect to have really good quality timber. We've pruned this up to about five and a half metres, so accounting for the stump, there'd be five metres of log length. We know from experience that is about th three cubic metres, once we take the bark off, of wood to the first branch. That log, probably cut it in half, two and a half metre logs or, or so, or maybe some five metre long beams. But we'll get about 1.5 cubic metres of sawn timber. We'll dry that, dress that, a little bit of loss through the process, 1.4 cubic metres of timber. What is a cubic metre of dried eucalypt timber? In this case, mountain ash. It's in the order of $6,000 a cube. So let's say that's $8,000 worth of wood. It would probably take me a day to harvest and mill this tree, stack it, dry it, get it commercially steam reconditioned or dry it myself. We're looking at a, a process, but the amount of labour is not that great particularly if you've got the equipment to fell and mill it. So we can actually grow high quality timber within our family's lifetime. Now, if you're too old to start looking 37 years ahead, look to your children and your grandchildren and see what you can do in the next 10 years, planting and managing young trees, so you can gift to them this sort of opportunity in the future. An opportunity, and who knows what the value of Australian native timbers will be then, could be anything. The closure of native forests in Victoria has probably increased the price dramatically and uh, certainly COVID did and there's no reason why good quality timber will go back in value but that's your judgment not mine. I'm confident 
in the future of good quality Australian native hardwoods grown in a good manner like that.